My name is Mari Levitt, and I have the privilege of serving the beautiful 28th Legislative District, which is home to Joint Base Lewis McCord, the largest military installation in the West. It's also home to Camp Murray, where our National Guard serves. I serve on the Joint Committee for Military and Veterans Affairs as co-chair this year, as also on the um, National Task Force for Military and Veterans Affairs for the National Council of State Legislatures. So very involved in our military service members um, and their families and helping to reduce those barriers for them to be successful. for our service members are not just for our service members, but they're for a whole family. So as a military child myself, I know that children who are in military families move from school to school to school and, and have to start all over again, depending on their age and make new friends. When the service member gets to notice, our spouses are the ones who are figuring out what are the schools like and what neighborhood do I want to live in if I have a choice and what are the childcare opportunities and then also what are the employment opportunities because I work and we need two incomes to sustain our family and so they're navigating that too. And for our military members, you know, they just got used to one duty station and then they're asked to go to another duty station. So they're having to navigate not only a new area, but a new unit, perhaps new duties, making sure that they're successful on behalf of their family. So it's a, it's a full family affair to be a service member and, and um, they all navigate different waters differently, but um, together at the same time. I do. I'm one I'm particularly excited about um, that came from our military spouses and listening to them is the Military Spouse Employment Act. And that does a lot of things, one of which is to make sure that when a military spouse, say they're in a particular field and they come to Washington and they're trained and they've gone to school to, to be trained in that field, that they can get to work in Washington and quickly. And so removing barriers is what this bill is about. It requires all of our agencies to expedite their licenses um, and expedite their applications to get to work if they're in a licensed field um, within 30 days. It allows uh, military spouses who have um, a contract, um, an employment contract, um, and if they're stationed now somewhere else out of Washington, it allows them to get out of that employment contract and not be punished. And it requires agencies to have a, a military spouse liaison or a contact um, to expedite those licenses and allow them to know what they're supposed to do prior to coming to Washington. So when they get to Washington, they've done all that we're asking them to do and removing those barriers so they can quickly get there. I have a couple other bills that I'm excited about also because it addresses our military spouse need as they navigate from state to state. And those are the interstate compacts. One is in speech audiology. And we know our children in our schools, if they have access to speech therapists or audiologists early in their learning, that they have a better chance of being successful. And then the mental health counseling compact. And we all know the mental health crisis that we're facing in Washington and beyond. And this allows mental health counselors and speech audiology counselors to be able to work in different states. So if they were working in a compact state, they can come to Washington and get to work very quickly. Or if they're leaving Washington and going to a compact state, that they can also work very quickly without having to fill out more paperwork, pay more fees and expenses, take more continuing education classes for fields they're already trained and have done that over and over and over again. Why are we doing all of this? Why are we serving our military members? Not only does it help our families, one in five Washington families, military families specifically, face food security challenges. And we know that our military families facing high housing as anyone else's childcare costs are a challenge. And so allowing our military spouses and partners to get to work benefits not only their family, but our entire community. The other reason we know is when it comes to military readiness, if the military spouse feels that they can contribute to their family and to their community, their active duty member is more likely to be retained and to stay in the military. When we look at military readiness, as they look at bases and consider closing bases, they take a look at military spouse satisfaction and active duty service member satisfaction, and that's a contributing factor. So anything we can do in Washington to remove those barriers and keep our military family strong and our community strong is something that we have a moral obligation to do.